I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to show you how to lighten a dark picture. Now, this one's not too bad. It's dark, as you can see, but it's not really that bad of a picture. We can lighten this up. Let me show you a couple of ways. Easy way first, and that's using the standard tool up here on the Enhance and Adjust Lighting Shadow Highlights. It does a good job. Notice it just gives us a nice brightness right away. You can use this to lighten the shadow parts of the picture. And if something is getting a bit too bright, you can use the darken highlights to darken that down. So if the hat's beginning to burn out a bit, you can use this to darken down those light parts. You can also adjust the mid-tone contrast as well. It's a real good tool, and frequently it's all that you need to use to lighten up a dark picture. But let's see if it's a little more difficult and, or you want to have a little punchier picture, there's another way to do this, and that's by using blending modes, my favorite technique. Take your layer, drag it up onto the new layer button like that, and then put a blending mode on this. The one I want to use is screen. There we go. And that just combines those two and brightens things up. I can do it again, just copy that layer, brightens it up still further. Now notice how much more contrast I have in here as well. So it's not only brightening it up, it's also giving me more contrast. You can just keep on doing this if you want to and get it real, real, real bright. It's up to you how far you want to go on this. I think on this particular picture, three is just about the right level on this. So I'll leave that at three. Easy to do as you can see. But this is a pretty straightforward, pretty easy picture to work with. What if we have a much more difficult picture? Let's take a look at that. Let me just get this out of the way. Here we go. Here's a kind of a standard shot that you might have on a vacation. You're inside of a really nice dark cave. The outside looks interesting. You take a nice shot through there. It looks great to your eye, but the camera is just not as powerful as the eye is at handling variances in value. It's real bright out here. It's real dark in here. Also, this is just about black. You know, the question is, is there anything in here at all that you can bring out? We could try this, of course, with the shadow highlights and see what we get. And you can see there is some detail in there. But, you know, I, I can't really get a whole lot out of there, and it's kind of washing out the middle at the same time. So, I know I've got detail in here. But this really isn't doing the job. This is a great use for using our screened layer technique. Now, because we have two areas, a very bright center area and a very, very dark outer area, we need to actually do this twice. So I'll show you how that's done. Let's first work on the middle section. So I'll copy that up here, new layer, change the mode to screen. Brightens that up. It's looking better already. Let's do that one more time. Looks pretty nice. I kind of like that. Let me just check one more shot. That's maybe a bit too bright. Now you can come in here and on your final layer, adjust the opacity on that layer to try to get just the level that you want. But I think I'll just remove this layer out of here. There we go. So three of these gives me a real nice image. I can improve that a bit further. We'll do that in just a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to combine these onto a new layer. And this uses my favorite keyboard shortcut, and that's Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, E on a Mac. Let's go ahead and do that. What that does is it takes all of these layers and combines them onto a new layer right there. You'll see why we did this in just a little bit. At this point, I can now look at the values in here. Let's go up to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, let's grab our Levels Control, and I'm going to bring the blacks up just a little bit. It'll add some richness into the image, you can see there. And I'll bring the whites up a little bit. So I'm just making the, the picture a bit more contrasty. 
by pulling these blacks and the whites up. I can check my mid-tones in here. I think they're about where they should be anyway. So there we go. We have a real nice values now in this middle section. But this is not working for us at all outside. So there we go. That is our layer for the inside. I can now hide that layer. We'll come back to that. And let's continue screening additional layers in here and see what we can do about this background. Okay, I'll just keep on adding these. And notice as I copy the new layer, it's already screened because the previous layer was screened. Let's bring up another one. One more. And I'm beginning to see some detail in here. It's a little bit washed out. We'll take care of that in a bit. That's about as far, I think, as I can push that without it beginning to act really, really weird. But we have a lot of detail showing now in here. So let's do the exact same thing on this one. Hold the Control alt shift keys down, hit the E key, and make a new layer of that one. Let me just bring up that. I think I have it sitting over here someplace. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Control alt shift E for Windows and Command Option Shift E for the Mac. A great keyboard shortcut to memorize. Okay, let's get that out of the way. All right, let's now take a look at the levels on this image. See if we can improve the values in here a little bit. So enhance, adjust lighting, levels. And let me bring the blacks back in again. There we go. I'm going to bring them in a lot. I want to actually get you know, pretty close to black out here, but keep a lot of my lightness in there. And that's what I'm doing. Let's bring our, our lights up a little bit. This brightens up the area right along the edge in here. Kind of watch that as you see right there, it, it brightens up that section. And that's looking pretty nice now. Has some detail in here. We can see some stuff in the shadow areas. It gets almost pure black out at the darkest edges, which is fine. Just a little bit darker there. And I think that looks pretty nice. Of course, the problem now is that we have this really bright washed out section in the middle. Of course, that's what we have up here. So now we can use a layer mask to show this piece on top of that one. So let's go up here. I'll make a quick layer mask. Now on layer masks, the more time you take to make your mask, the more careful you are with that mask, the better the effect is going to be. We'll just do a fast one here though so you can see what the setting works like. And let's go ahead and click the polygonal lasso tool. And on this one you just click and then you know, click points and Photoshop Elements comes in and puts lines between the points that you set. Now don't go too fast. If you click too fast it's going to collapse the selection and that's not what you want to have happen. So just take your time and work around the edge. I'm just working right along the edge of the cave here. If you have a different selection tool that you prefer, you know, go ahead and use that. I happen to like this tool, but any, any tool you have that will make the selection that you want is fine to use. Use the one that you're most comfortable with. And let's just pull again down this side. And we're going to go clear around the whole mouth of the cave here. And we'll make a selection just of the inside part. And we'll hide everything else using a layer mask. Let's come right down around here. And we'll come out here and I'm just going to go kind of roughly right along the light part of the sand right in there. And let's just bring that back to our beginning. There's our selection. Now you can hit the new layer mask button that makes a layer mask out of that. So there we go. We have the nice values in here for our cave and we have our nice values out there for the background. But our edge is kind of rough so we can hide that. Click on the layer mask. Make sure you have that light blue surround, that cyan surround on that. And we're going to soften up that edge. That's easy to do. Go up to the filter menu, come down to blur grab the Gaussian blur right there and we can now use this. So here's here's no blur. Let me find the edge. There's the edge. And I'm just going to slowly pull this up until I get a little bit of blurring happening in here. 
and it looks good in the picture. At some point, it'll be just about right. right about in here. I'm seeing a little bit of a problem right there that I'm not happy with. So let's just take a look at that and see what's going on there and fix that little bit of the mask. We'll then come back and adjust that. Okay. So that brightness right there. I prefer to have it being dark. I have a couple of spots in here where there's some lightness right there and right there. What's happening here is that the black on the mask is encroaching into my light area and I'm seeing some of that bright background. So I wanted is I want to paint white from this side up against that edge. So we're painting white and actually expanding our mask a little bit. I'll do that right down there and I'll do that up here. If it's a little bit dark on that edge. That doesn't matter. It's the white stuff I want to get rid of. Okay, let's make sure our color is white. Grab a paintbrush. Set the brush to a hard brush. The size looks pretty good. That's about 13. And now as I paint in white in here, you bring my opacity clear up to 100%. There we go. Now see, it just knocks that out. So I'm expanding the white area with the white brush. And I'll do a little bit right along this edge here. Just kind of cleaning up that edge. And while we're at it, let's just take a peek along. I think we're okay everywhere else. I didn't really see anything else happening. Oh, there is a bit right there. Okay, do the same thing here. Just expanding the white part of the mask. And let's check this side is a little bit right in there. Get that out of the way. This is okay. That's going to be hidden by our, our Gaussian blur. Let's just check the edge up here. Just a bit right there and right in there. And I think that's probably about it. Okay, that takes care of those little spots. We can now zoom back out. And the reason I did that with a hard brush before I did the Gaussian Blur so I could get a real nice clean edge because my whole mat is hard edged. And then when we do the Gaussian Blur, the whole thing will have an even softness on it. All right, now let's go ahead and take care of that Gaussian Blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it looks pretty good now. It looks real clean. You can see down here where that kind of hard edge was, it actually was right there, but it's not noticeable. So that's taken care of. It just looks like a little bit of a, a dry spot in there. So there we are. Just a little bit of Gaussian blur. And again, you can see the blur edge. There's, there's a before, and there's just kind of the softening of that edge up by using the Gaussian blur filter. Okay, last thing I want to do is to look at the colors in here. They're pretty green. I think I might want to bring these a little less green, little, bring some yellow out of that. And that's on this layer here, as you can see right there. That's, that's that layer in there. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So let's go up to the Enhance menu, Adjust Color. And we'll use the Hue Saturation Control in here. Let's just bring that one up. There we go. Now there are several ways of working with this. You have your master. In here you can adjust the overall color this way. But it's, it's kind of a weird effect. I don't, don't really like that for this. So let's put this back to zero. Or you can choose different colors in here. We have reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas. What I want to do is see which one of these is controlling most of my color. We'll try reds first. I'll pull the lightness down. See, nothing's happening on that red, not the red channel. Yellow, nothing really happening on the yellow channel. Greens, nothing there either. I happen to know this is cyan, but you'll see now, notice when I hit the cyan channel, that really changes it. So obviously cyan is where my colors are. But let's just go ahead and finish up, see if anything else is having a, an effect here. Blues, nothing and magentas nothing so we're dealing with the cyans i'm just setting these other two back to zeros so it's the cyans that i care about now let's go ahead and i'm going to shift the hue a little bit to the right here a little bit towards the blue in there 
This is going to put a bit more blue in and take out some of that greenish tint, that cyanish tint. You have a lot of that cyan here, that's what's reflecting, but it doesn't look that natural. So I move that over a little bit. We also can bring our saturation down just a touch. There's not quite as much color. And bring the lightness up a little bit to counter, counteract that darkening from the saturation. So I'm trying to just trying to, to pull some of the color out of that case. So it's not that much color. There's still color in here, but it's not as bright as it was before. And there we go. Just a little bit of a color adjustment on the cyans and choose OK. And there we go. There is our finished picture. Let's now compare this. I can do that. I'm going to hide everything here. There we go. Click on the top layer on the picture. I'll do my four keyboard shortcut thing again. Control Alt Shift E. Combine these two layers together up here. I can now hide those. Let's bring our original back up again and let's see how we did. There's the original and here's our improved version. So I, I think we've done a pretty good job of taking what is essentially a bad photograph and pulling a lot out of it and making it into a good photograph just by proper application of some of these different special techniques using the blending modes screen and a bit of layer mask stuff and working on the dark part and the light part separately and then it's blending those together. So there you go. That's how to lighten a dark photograph. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.